While working in the darkroom, photographers develop different ways of enhancing the photos. By controlling the amount of light that falls on different sections of the photos, you can really draw attention to different places. For example, this picture here we have of this mine. We have this mining cart and we really want to bring attention to this cart while taking the attention away from the background so much. So let's have a look at the different tools. If you click inside your toolbar here, you'll see three different tools. You see the dodge, the burn, and the sponge tool. We're not actually going to be using these tools. We're going to be using some better techniques. But first of all, let me explain them to you. The dodge tool. The reason the icon looks like this is because when photographers are working in a darkroom and the light comes out of the enlarger and hits the paper, which is doused in chemicals, this affects the way exposure happens on the paper. Wherever there's an absence of light, those areas become brighter because the less of the image is imprinted on it and it just stays the white of the paper. So by creating little shapes for areas that the photographer would want to lighten up, they would attach a little wire to it, hence why we have the little circle there with a little line on it. That would be a little shape cut out of cardboard with a piece of wire on it and the photographer would hold that over different portions of the image to shield it from the lighting and this produced brightening those parts. Now the exact opposite can be done with the burn tool. Burning is when the photographer would cup their hands over the light and direct extra light onto certain portions of the image that they would want to appear darker than the rest of the photograph. Then we have the sponge tool. The sponge tool, just by using the sponge and just sponging off some of the chemicals, you could lower the saturation of the photograph so the color wouldn't be quite so saturated in those areas that it's been sponged. Now let's have a look at creating these effects right here inside of Photoshop, but rather than using those tools, we'll go a step further. Let's open the layers palette. What we're going to do is create a new layer, and we want to create a layer that we can use for our dodging and for our burning. So the first thing we're going to do is rather than just click the new layer icon, we're going to hit the option key. That would be the alt on Windows and just click it once and we get the new layer. But this time we get a dialog box and we're going to call this one dodging. So this is going to be our dodging layer. Now under mode, we can change the blend mode of this to overlay. And once the overlay is turned on, notice there's another option here that we can check this box that will fill it with a neutral color, which is 50% gray. And then when we click OK, it now produces a new layer. And notice because the layer is in 50% gray, the overlay blend mode ignores that 50% gray. So this is great. So basically what we've created is a solid that's not affecting the rest of our image right now. And we're able to dodge onto this. Let's do the same thing. Let's create another layer holding the Alt key. And this time we'll call it burn. And we'll turn on the same options. We'll go to overlay mode and then we'll fill it and click OK. Now let's create one more layer, but this time we're just going to create a straight layer and we're going to call it satch. And this is short for saturation. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to work on our burn layer. What we're going to do is darken up different portions of the image. So let's select a brush. Make sure that your foreground and background colors are set to black and white by hitting the D key, D for default, and then make sure that black is the foreground color. Now select the brush. And we want to start with a soft edge brush. Perhaps let's start with a pretty large one. Maybe 200 pixels will be good. Make sure the hardness is all the way at zero. And now we'll adjust the opacity. Let's turn the opacity down. We particularly want to be working underneath 20% because rather than darkening it in one fell swoop we can slowly build up our effect over time just by various strokes so the first thing we're going to do is just we're going to darken up the sky a little bit notice as we begin to paint you can see that that sky darkens up a little so let's just do a couple of strokes we're just going to darken up the top part of the image doing several passes here and we're just going to go down all the way to our cart because the cart is the area that we really want to bring attention to. So if we start to look at what we've done, you can see inside the mask there, you can see, well, actually inside the layer, you can see where we've been darkening it. Let's do the same at the bottom. But let's just be very careful how we do this. We just want to darken around the bottom there. 
and both the sides. So what we're doing is we want to draw attention to our cart, and by doing that, we darken off the rest of the image. Because your eyes typically draw into the brighter part and ignores the areas of black. So let's just darken that off a little more at the top. And then we're just going around the bottom a little more, darkening that. And perhaps darken it more around the edges. This is called vignetting, when the edges are darker than the rest of the image. So now if we look at this before and after, what we're doing is we're taking a lot of the attention away now from these other areas of the photograph and we're bringing attention to our card. Let's go for a smaller brush now and we're going to drop our opacity down a little bit more. And then we're just going to paint carefully around there just to darken off those other areas just to match the rest of it. Just cleaning it up a little bit here. And it doesn't have to be too precise depending on the effect you're looking for. If you wanted to get a really exact effect, what you might do is select the entire card at the beginning. And then we can paint carefully. All right, there we go. Notice if you look at it, there's a few little rough strokes there. So why don't we just blur all this up a little bit. So we're just going to choose Filter Blur. And we're going to use our Gaussian Blur. I'm not going to give it too high a setting. Just a couple of pixels there, just to get rid of some of those rough edges. Excellent. Now, if we look at this before and then afterwards, you see what we're doing is we're already drawing more attention into our cart by darkening up the background. Now, this is more of a compositional type of dodging and burning. You can also use dodging and burning for bringing out detail inside of a photograph. For example, if there's some areas there that were a little bit too bright and looking blown out, like perhaps those rocks, you could burn those just to bring out the information, the color information. And then the same thing like down here where it's dark and you want to bring out some more things, you could apply dodging there just to open up those, uh, those highlights a little bit and see a little bit more detail. So you can use it for that. In this case, we're using it for compositional effect. So let's go to dodging. And now we're going to switch our colors around. Now we want to choose our foreground color, which is white. Now let's increase the brush size a little bit just by hitting the right bracket key. And the left bracket key will make it smaller. And then what we're going to do is just carefully paint on the front of this card. Just a little bit. We just want to brighten this up. So let's do our first pass. And we would consider this would be the front part that the light would really be hitting. Let's increase it a bit more. And by doing this, what we're doing is we're actually changing the tonality of the image and drawing the viewer's eye into the front of this cart because this is where we want them to look. So if you look at it right now, there's that dodging layer and you can see we've started to dodge. We can look at it before and after. Let's just bring a little bit more attention here. Let's go down the sides now. And maybe do these wheels. In fact, let's increase the opacity just every little bit. Let's bring it up to about 11%. Then we can paint those wheels in a little bit, side of the cart there. And now that's bringing a little bit more attention to that part of the image. Now let's paint one more time over the front because we want to make this brighter than the rest. All right. Now if we look at the difference that we've done here, notice we've got the two layers of dodging and burning. And notice there's no areas of real black or areas of real white, so we haven't pushed it too hard. But let's turn those layers off if we look at it before. And now we look at it afterwards. It's really drawing the viewer's eye into the front of the cart. Now the last thing we want to do is if you notice that the cart itself there's not a lot of color in it, a lot of gray and a lot of the background there is an extremely saturated picture like there's very brilliant blues and oranges and these can be great colors and they can really add to the image and that's because it was shot near sunset so it was a good time of the day to shoot it but in this case we don't want a lot of saturation. So we're going to go to the satch layer and we're going to change the blend mode of this to saturation. Now what happens is whatever I paint on this layer now, the saturation will match whatever the saturation of the brush color is. So let's have a look at the brush. So if we look under the S, which is saturation, if I drag this down here, notice I can be in black or white and the saturation is still at zero. So that means no matter which shade I do, dragging it down the left hand side, it doesn't matter. If I start to paint now, notice that the color will let me paint with it. We'll increase the opacity all the way up. And now as I paint on that layer, notice it removes all the color. 
that's because it's take it's in saturation mode and it's now matching the saturation of the color which is zero now if we go back inside our color picker here and then we pull it over a little bit more and then we set our saturation perhaps to 50 percent doesn't matter what color we use we're just looking at the saturation right now don't worry about the hue click OK and now I begin to paint notice it brings back the color it's a little bit less we're actually in the case of the green it's a little bit more saturated than it was before so we can adjust the saturation just by painting there in this case we're just gonna choose black because black has no color so the saturation will be zero and right now we're just going to use a larger brush and we're just gonna paint away all the saturation on the image let's just go the large part of the image first just with a big big brush stroke now we don't want to go over our mining cart here so let's choose a smaller brush now when we get closer to the mining cart so we can get right in those edges and we're just pulling the saturation all the way down and we're removing color on everywhere except for where our cart is and we can get rid of it there inside the, the rest of the building so what we have right now, if you look at it, we have a grayscale image with the cart just in color. Now that's an interesting effect, and if that's the effect you're going for, you could stop here. But in this case, that's not what we're doing. What we want to do is we just want to blend the saturation in a little bit. We want to lower the saturation of the background, but not completely remove it. So all we need to do is just adjust the opacity. As we pull down the opacity, notice it lets some of the color come back through. So we want to take this around about the middle here. Actually, pull up a little higher. Around about 61 is looking good. So what we've done now, as you see, we've lowered the saturation. Because if I hide that layer, it's full saturation. So now, by desaturating the background, it's bringing more of the attention to the foreground. So if you look at it now, you can see how this cart really pops. I've probably overdone this a little bit. Let's turn the burning down a little bit so it's not quite so heavy. Let's just bring it up a little bit around about 60 something percent and we'll keep the dodge we could turn that down too if we wanted so there's before and we'll just pull it out just enough to make it pop and we get a little bit more of a, a believable image there so this is the image after and here we go here's an image before notice that your eyes drawn all over the place and the sky really takes a lot of attention but then once you apply this your eyes really drawn to the cart so that's some of the principles there is working with dodging and burning and saturation.